So, I thought I'd got a really good deal on a Fender AVRI offset tremolo on eBay. Turns out I bought a classic player instead. So what we're going to do today is, um, even though it's not the unit I thought it was, um, and it's really easy to mistake them because they both have kind of a nickel coloured button on the front. What we're going to do is we are going to compare um, how it sounds. Well, how is it different in terms of function and sound compared to the um, unit that comes stock on my Squire Classic 5 Jaguar. To do this we are going to carry out six tests. The first is a weigh-in. The second is an acoustic test to see if it fundamentally changes the sound uh, the acoustic sound of the guitar. The third test is a plugged in test, so if there are any acoustic changes to the sound of the guitar, do those come through in the pickups and through the amp? The fourth test is the wiggle test. Um, what is the kind of sound and movement of the tremolo itself like when it is um, operated? The fifth test is the range test, seeing if there's any difference in um, the actual range of um, dropping in pitch that you can achieve with either unit. And the sixth test is a noise and rattle test. Is one unit quieter in operation than the other? And then I'll also just kind of share my opinions on it and my experience on using, um, well, both units actually. Okay, so why bother making a video about this? Well, I'll start by saying that the I think the classic player tremolo, which is slightly different from the regular made in Mexico tremolo in that it has a uh, locking mechanism on it, I think it's generally considered the kind of second best offset tremolo that Fender offer in terms of Jaguar and Jaguars. The AVRI is king of course, that's everyone's favourite in terms of the units that Fender make. Um, the classic player is generally considered the second best as far as I can tell in terms of a consensus online. The third favourite would then be the made in Japan unit and the fourth or least favourite unit that Fender make would be the Squire unit that comes on all kind of Squire um, classic vibe vintage modified guitars. It's quite hard to find the classic player unit in the UK. You only really find it if people are selling one that they've taken from a um, classic player Fender Jaguar or Jazzmaster or from a Vintera modified Jaguar or Jazzmaster. And those are the only two guitars that use this tremolo. So it's a little bit rarer than um, a Made in Japan for example. So, I want to demonstrate and kind of explore, is it worth the upgrade um, if you find one second hand in terms of function? Does it fundamentally improve the function of the guitar? Uh, and by that do I mean, does it stay in tune better? Um, does it wiggle better? Um, does it kind of uh, make a more pleasing vibrato sound? And the second reason is because I want to prove to you that the um, easiest way to drastically improve your uh, cheap guitar sound is to upgrade the bridge and the tailpiece. And I think you might be surprised by how much difference changing these two parts makes. I would argue that it's possibly even as much difference as changing the pickups. So the last important piece of information to share with you is that I have modified the vibrato on my Squire Classic 5. I followed all the steps that um, Mike Adams um, suggests for uh, improving the operation of the Squire unit. Um, and that is um, principally taking the unit apart, um, filing smooth or sanding smooth the um, knife edge plate inside the unit um, to stop the clicking noise that happens with the tremolo. I have also tried the hammer trick. The problem is that um, the metal isn't very bendy on these cheap import parts. Um, it's a very cheap metal, it doesn't really bend, so I had limited success with that. 
And the other thing that I have done to stop the play between the arm and the collet, um, which produces a rattling sound, I covered the um, top of the arm in tape. I pushed it hard into the sleeve. Um, and in doing so, most of the tape comes off the arm, but whatever is left on there just fills the gaps and it stops it rattling. And that eliminates any play. Now, if you have the unit stuck, um, you will still have all those rattling and clicking noises that drive everyone mad. And the other thing that fundamentally changes the sound of my guitar is that I have a set of um, vintage Alnico 2 uh, Jaguar pickups from Northern Pickups. I've got a separate video on that if you want to check that out. So enough talking, let's see if it makes any difference.
All right, so what do we think? What are the differences? Well, in the first test, the weight test, um, you often hear people say that a better tremolo will be a heavier tremolo. So people often comment on how heavy the AVRI tremolo is compared to the Squire or the Japanese version or stuff like that. The classic player tremolo is a bit heavier than the Squire, um, kind of 10 grams overall. Um, more of that is coming from the tremolo unit than the arm, but is 10 grams a big difference? You decide, I don't know. Um, and again, the um, AVRI is only perhaps that much heavier again than the classic player unit, and maybe less. So yeah, there is a difference there. Um, but also bear in mind that there are extra mechanical parts on the classic player. And there's no locking mechanism on the Squire version. So you've got more parts, so of course it's gonna be heavier. Is that a big difference? You tell me. The second test was the acoustic test. Now, this was a really hard test to do because it's actually really hard to play with exactly the same amount of velocity with your pick in hand between the two clips. I'm sure you would have noticed I was stood a little bit further back for the classic player clips than I was for the Squire clips. Now, the classic player clips are a tiny bit quieter than the Squire clips. So yes, some of the differences you're going to hear between those two clips are the difference in how close I was to the camera. I think that the um, Squire sound is kind of a bit bolder and I think that the classic player sound is a bit more um, kind of softer and rounder sounding and there's less zinginess in the sound. The next test was kind of plugged in test so that is with clean, overdrive and lead sounds. On clean sounds I think the classic player tremolo clips are kind of clearer and punchier and if you listen to the rhythm circuit clips I think it's actually quite a lot clearer. When we move on to overdrive I think the classic player units are uh, units again punchier and more direct. You can hear the low end is tighter and I think the highs are both clearer and also a bit rounder. And actually I think if you just listen to the clips back to back, the classic player clips uh, sound more um, bell-like and more musical. And in the lead clips I think the classic player drumolo sounds are just more snappy and more twangy overall. 
Moving on to test four, the wiggle test, the squire unit is a lot stiffer feeling, uh, whereas the classic player unit is a lot more um, soft feeling, and it gives us more subtle effect as a result. Of course, you can change the spring in the classic player unit if you prefer a stiffer feel. In terms of tuning stability though, the squire unit isn't very good, it's not very reliable, whereas the classic player unit is a huge step up in terms of tuning stability and reliability. It really makes a massive difference. Test five, the range test. Um, the two sounded pretty similar to me, to be honest. Um, you might have a better ear, you might be able to discern more of a difference. But the real standout thing, again, is that the squire went out of tune during the test, whereas the classic player unit was still in tune the whole way through. And test six, the last test, the rattle and noise test. Well, yeah, there was a big difference here. Um, now, as I mentioned, I've modified my squire unit. This means that the squire unit is completely silent and rattle free in operation. Now the classic player unit is different in that instead of just um, pushing in and out in terms of the arm, um, the arm actually screws into the collet. So what that means is in theory you have a much more secure connection between the collet and the arm. The problem comes in though in that there is still a poor fit between the arm and the sleeve at the top. Um, and so whenever you actuate the tremolo and you use the arm, you hear a rattling sound where the arm is hitting either side of the sleeve as you operate it. So that means that the classic player unit has a lot more noise in it than the squire unit. Now if you haven't modified your squire unit then not only are you going to get the same um, annoying rattling that you get in the classic player tremolo, uh, you're also going to have that annoying clicking noise where the rough edge of the, the knife edge is clicking inside the tremolo. So in terms of whether the classic player unit is a upgrade or not, in terms of noise, depends on whether you have modified your squire unit or not. Now in theory, you should be able to modify the classic player unit in the same way as the squire unit. However, there's one important caveat here. You cannot use the hammer trick on the classic player unit. And the reason for that is because the uh, collet and arm fit together with a screw mechanism, if you um, hammer the, uh, the threads, on the classic player series it's going to have trouble um, screwing into the collet and you will have potentially have to replace the arm on your unit. All right are there any other points we need to consider when comparing the squire unit and the classic player unit? The first thing to think about is there has been a problem reported online with the classic player unit uh, and I did find this with the unit I had as well where the uh, lock button actually slips out of place. Now the reason for this is the lock button is beveled. So that means instead of being completely flat, um, it kind of goes like this at the edges. Because it is not making completely flush, smooth contact with the top of the tremolo, but it is actually a bit of an angle on the edge, it can slip out of place. Now fortunately there is a really helpful link uh, written by Mike Adams about how to address this problem. It's really simple, you just need to kind of sand that bit of metal flat um, so that it will make flat full contact inside the Dremolo unit and then you're not going to have that problem. But you are going to have to put the work into making it function properly. The other thing to consider is that the Dremolo arm is actually shorter on the classic player unit than it is on the Squire unit or than it will be on a Japanese unit or an AVRI unit. The reason for that is the classic player model and the Vintera modified model, the two models that come with this tremolo, change the distance between the tremolo plate and the bridge. They move this part closer. And so because of that, they also reduce the length of the arm. So they is in a similar place for the palm of your hand when you're playing with both units and it isn't further up. Now what this means is if you retrofit one onto your um, classic five guitar or any other guitar that has the traditional spacing, um, you're going to find that the tremolo arm is a bit shorter. Now it's not a huge difference and whatever this matters to you is a matter of taste and a matter of opinion, but it is something to bear in mind. If this is a massive deal breaker for you and it's a really big problem, then on forums people say that the tremolo arm for the American Professional Jazz Master, which also has a screw-in um, arm and collet system, should be the same threads and it should fit. And that will be the longer length. Okay, so to wrap up, is the Classic Player Tremolo a good upgrade for your Squire Classic 5? The simple answer is yes, it is a good upgrade. You're going to notice um, a significant tonal improvement, um, in my opinion. 
you're going to notice a significant improvement in functionality in terms of kind of tuning stability and always returning to pitch. That's a big improvement over the stock unit. And also aesthetically, you're going to notice a difference. The classic player unit has a really nice slender curve to the arm here. It's got the lock button on it and the Fender logo and pattern number embossed on it. And I think that just looks a lot nicer. Feel wise, it is a preference thing. You may prefer the stiffer spring of the Squire unit or of an American unit, or you might prefer the softer feel of the classic player. And I think it will probably be the same feel as the Japanese unit, because believe it or not, they are made in the same factory. The only two downsides for the unit are that the uh, lock button will slip out of place sometimes unless you modify it with a bit of elbow grease. And the other downside is the rattly arm. You can get around these things. Again, it's just annoying that it doesn't work as it should. But overall, yes, it is a good upgrade. I would recommend it. If you can get one cheap, I think you should go for it. Um, it's hard to find them new in the UK. They're quite rare to find. You're probably only gonna find one if someone has upgraded the unit on their Vintero Modified or on their classic player guitar. Um, but if you can find one for a good price, then um, I think they're generally regarded as the second best tremolo out of the standard four. Obviously there are others like the American Professional and the Panorama, but in terms of those kind of four um, standard units, I'd say it's probably the second best that you can get. So you might ask, well, why isn't it on my guitar anymore if I finished the review and I've got all these good things to say about it? Well, I actually had a problem with mine. I bought it secondhand. Um, there was a problem with the collet and I sent it back to the seller. Um, and hopefully I will get an AVRI to put on this at some point soon. However, that being said, I think any of the units that are available, Japanese, uh, Made in Japan, Classic Player, or AVRI would all be a really good tonal and functional upgrade for your Squire guitar.